Here in Davos, while there are plenty of headlines around uh, the global business and political elites, there's another side of Davos which is not always explored to that extent. And we are getting you an insight into the social entrepreneurs, the millennials, and what are defined as Davos's global shape as the times are changing and they are changing with uh, the help of these three uh, young gentlemen from India with innovative solutions to address the economy as well as social needs. Utkarsh, uh, Jadeep and Maninda, thank you for joining me here on NDTV. Let you. me begin with this big idea which brought you to Davos and the reception that you have had. Uh, right, I mean it's been a fabulous um, reception that we've had. It's focused on fourth industrial revolution, responsive and responsible leadership. Uh, I'm a global shaper from Delhi um, and I'm personally helping build India's first smart village in collaboration with the government of Maharashtra. I work for Microsoft and focus on digitizing public sector organization. To tell you a little more about the smart village, this is uh, in Maharashtra Harisal, which has infamously been called the epicenter of malnutrition. And uh, when we began work there, mobile phones didn't work. The student dropout rates were significant. And uh, avenues for finding skilling and employment were virtually non-existent. One year from now, um, through television, white spaces, and alternate means of technology, we have enabled uh, last mile connectivity. So now villagers interact with each other on Skype and WhatsApp. And recently, Times of India put forward an article that says that villagers are now selling their produce uh, online on e-commerce, leveraging the, the next boom that's, uh, that's happening in India. Right. Yeah. Jadeep, let me get you on this. We have, uh, NDTV rather, has explored some of the work that you've done, but how are you lighting up India's mountains? So, uh, our organization is called the Global Himalayan Expedition, and we have electrified 25 villages till date in the remotest communities of the world, I would say, uh, that are living in the Himalayas. You practically have to trek three to four days to access these communities. And the way they are living is in the most pristine of the environments, but they don't know what a light bulb is. So when you provide energy access to these communities using solar microgrids, that's a new innovation in technology that we have done uh, using direct current, the kind of reaction you, that you see on the faces of these people is priceless. The women start crying, the people start praying when they look at the light bulbs, and the children start dancing. When have you gone into a room, switched on the light and started dancing? <laughs> so lighting up the faces uh, of uh, all these forgotten villages in that sense and 400 million people in India don't have access to electricity right. and that indeed is a shocking statistic but Manindar talk about how you are focusing on the education technology and taking it to rural schools across India. Absolutely. Um, like there's been a lot of uh, talk about how education is going to change with the fourth industrial revolution and how we're going to have holograms, everything, everything. But uh, I want to focus on the, let's say, the forgotten segment. That is the uh, you know semi-urban or rural uh, segment in India. You know, you would know. NTV has done a support my school campaign. Um, we are preparing them. I don't. I don't think we are even preparing them for the second industrial revolution, in the factory world. You know, so every year they go to the next grade, they actually fall behind. So what we are trying to do is trying to not dump gadgets there. You know, that's not how it's going to work. Uh, what we believe is that we need to create regionalized content, you know, which they can associate with, number one. Second, have very little hardware, you know, so that maintenance and handling it easy. And the most important aspect is little or no teacher training. So our platform is a click-only platform, you know, where teacher just needs to know how to point and click. So we are hoping that, you know, uh, with the steps that the baby steps we are taking, um, uh, we hope to touch 500 schools this year, um, uh, you know, and all these are remote areas. So uh, the, the best part is if you provide them the tools, they are performing equally or better than the city kids. So they should be given that chance. And that's what we are trying to do. Right. You can be born poor, but there's no reason that everyone should stay exactly. poor. And uh, I want to focus on this element of social entrepreneurship because I feel that Davos has been criticized to be an elitist sector, a place where only the capitalists of the world come in and is disconnected from reality. But tell me about your experience with these very so-called capitalists and elites and how they have helped your business right. or your ideas. Sure. So um, I also run a non-profit that does peer-to-peer -peer mentoring and r just now I was uh, at a at a, at a breakfast meeting with Bill Gates and some other entrepreneurs who've committed to giving half of their wealth 
and all of them were there sharing why they did it. And one of them were from Dangote Foundation. And I know three other shapers are from Africa who are doing phenomenal work. I, could, I told them about uh, the work that they're doing and they said they were so excited, their eyes lit up. And it was, you know, that's what I, my nonprofit does. It provides, you know, the connection that would not normally happen. And as Jadeep was mentioning, for him, for many other entrepreneurs, this is, this is an access point to take our ventures, our ideas to the next level. So it's not just ideas and introductions. It's actually taking what, you, what, you, what you're learning through insights and sessions into forward, uh, forward actionable ideas. So I, I believe that it's more than just a platform for capitalists to come together and you know have uh, cocktails and canopies so it's not about networking but it's about actual help and Jadib, i believe you have a story where you were directly uh, helped with your davos experience last year uh let me first uh, get back uh, you know the global shapers community that we are all part of uh, we have a privilege that 50 shapers every year are given the opportunity to be here at Davos. Now that is an opportunity very few people have. Now the average age of people here at Davos is 50 and then you have this bunch of 50 shapers who are between the ages of 20 to 30. Now it's our initiative to actually reach out to these people and actually tell them what we are doing and represent the voice of the millennials, the millions out there as to what kind of work is being done in the communities back home and my personal experience I was here I had the privilege uh, of being here at Davos in 2016 and I met some of the most amazing business leaders who committed to 30 villages uh, being electrified and that was my Davos experience and so I call this the magic mountain because if you have the will and if you can really reach out and if you have the courage uh, and if you have been doing some amazing work the people here listen to you the people here want to help you so it's it's not about a group of uh, elite people coming together the people here really want to reach out to the youth and they really want to enable the youth in the work that they're doing yeah I just like to add on if if that's all right so yesterday I was at this working group uh, that was discussing last mile internet connectivity that had people from competitors, the, the larger organizations, Google, Microsoft uh, and the other, they had startups, they had policy people and the key idea was to come up with three actionables that you'll actually deliver the next year. And that is what is important. It's important for competitors, people who come from different social, economic, political beliefs to be on the same table mm. and discuss and take forward. So I believe that that was one concrete working group that I was part of and three concrete suggestions were advanced to improve access, enhance the digital ecosystem and ensure that uh, the benefits of the fourth industrial revolution are taken forward equitably and embraced by everyone, not just by the, the elite, so to speak. Right. Well, then the talk about your experience with mentorship here as well, because there are so many people who are doing amazing work here. Right. That's a granted. Right. So, do you feel that you come away with that kind of mentorship from Davos as well as the community of peers who are equally as passionate as you are about social entrepreneurship? Absolutely. I mean, um, I'll, I'll share uh, a, a, a story with you. Uh, so yesterday we were at a dinner and uh, uh, it, was, it was a normal dinner, right? But the person sitting next to me was uh, CEO from Pepsi, right? And uh, we, we got into a conversation and, uh, you know, where do you get the chance where they come to you and say, listen, we want to make a difference. So tell us how we can help you, you know. So it's not, money is later, it comes, right? The funding comes, but what's the, f so my ask was, can you give us the platform to showcase what we are doing? Because the most difficult part is to let the world know that this is happening. You know, the moment you get the platform, things come together. So the fact is that you, when we get this platform, when we get this tag, which gives us access to everything we are equals we go and we talk we ask them questions and and they are more than willing to help so there's no i mean the 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 definition of capitalism and the capitalists sitting here and all that i mean it is there's way more than that and as he, as he rightly mentioned that there's a lot of practical discussion going on and we are part of that we, we're going to take a lot away from this and millennials always look at the world with fresh eyes so you bring that perspective so let me ask you very quickly all three of you your best Davos moment where you feel uh, that th there was a line or a exchange and some of you uh, mentioned an incident which you will just take away as a formative change in the way you do business in India. Something which will change the way you look at things. Right. So I'll, I'll just go back to uh, the broadband discussion that we were having yesterday. So it was it, the panel comprised people from 
different countries who are very invested in India. So we talk of ease of doing business in India, we talk of investing in India, but I could see that although India doesn't rank very highly in the ease of doing business, there's palpable energy and excitement in different stakeholders from the Middle East, from Africa, from, uh, from North America, Latin America, in investing in India. So the millennials are definitely exciting uh, and building a brand for India and Davos is one such platform of doing that. I think for me, uh, the personal story that I have is I've seen the leaders here are very decisive. It's either a yes or a no. They won't beat around the bush and tell you, okay, you know, let's follow up, you send us a mail. And that's, that was my experience. Within five minutes of the meeting, the leaders that uh, committed to the electrification of the villages, they said yes within five minutes of the meeting. So, so that's what I see here. The leaders here are very decisive. They want to take action. And, uh, you know, it's not about just a group of elite people coming together. The people here are really concerned about the issues that are out there in the world. There are more than one billion people without access to energy. There are many people without uh, access to uh, food. But the more discussions that are happening here is how can you reach out to these people? What is the uh, what is the ask? What is this required to really eradicate poverty? To really eradicate energy poverty? To really eradicate uh, water and sanitation problems from the world? And that's what the world leaders are discussing here. Mm. Business for good. Yes. Um, for me, it's been quite uh, awesome so far. Like even if Davos was to end today, it's still got to, uh, three days to go. But I would have I would have been happy going back home because. Uh, uh, there are three organizations, uh, I would like not name them right now, but who are, uh, like, as I told you, this year we're going to touch 500 schools. Uh, otherwise, in a normal scenario, those would have been 500 and we would have struggled to scale it and everything. everything. So, when we are achieving those 500, when we are launching that, they are going to send their teams over there. We, we are going to sit, them, uh, sit with them, with the, um, all the three organizations, and we're going to devise a strategy to scale it up. I mean with their experience and uh, our know-how of the of the ground it's it's bound to you know create an impact so congratulations on the great work you're doing Thank and you. congratulations on being davos's global shapers hope Thank the swiss alps only bring more altitude to your dreams and passions thank you thank you so much thank you